Hello. It's time for Japan Outpost. I'm Yuka House. Today I'm in North Wales. In fact, this is the place I've been before, but we are doing something different today. So please join me. So uh, four people are uh, leaving today and then they are actually doing a very advanced techniques that the usual beginner learners are not doing. So let's uh, ask them each uh, what kind of weaving they are working on. So first, uh, uh, here I'm creating a, a ruffle weave. So I've got a, um, a, an added piece to the warp on this side, this section, which is a different tension. And as it's loose, it enables you to do this and move this forward at a different speed outside mm -hmm. so that as you weave you're ending up with a, a ruffle piece on one side be more obvious when I So that when it comes off, you've got this loose piece at one side in the weaving. So you get oh. this kind of effect here. Oh, that makes a frill. Yeah. So you can use, use the frill to make a sleeve. You can use the frill to make a collar. Oh, you can beautiful. use the frill to make a bottom of a jacket or a skirt. That's beautiful. The, the, how much you want to make it loose is just all up to you. Yes, it is. But you can you can have it quite loose, really. So I need to keep moving it forwards. Mm. But then this stays the same, just regular weaving there. Mm. I see. Thank you very much. Hi. I see you. <laughs> so, Kim, I haven't seen you before. Would you tell me where you're from? So, I'm from the Sari Shed in Norfolk, um, over in Dis. And so I'm another Sari studio, but on the other side of the country. Wow. And so we've come and met up today to share techniques. Ah. And meet up. Wonderful. So you came all the way, yeah. long way. Yeah. So show me what kind of weaving you are doing so today. So this today I'm doing uh, weaving with no reed. So all the other looms have reeds on that you beat with to beat your cloth. Oh. This one has no reed. So that means that you can use your fingers to beat with. Oh. And then you can make different shapes by putting your fingers in different places. Oh. And then also I've cl clamped these in different positions, all the heddles, so that that creates shapes with the warp threads. And as you're going along, you can change the position of your warp threads to create patterns as you're wow. weaving. And then adding bits in so that the patterns of the warp threads makes lots of different designs. Oh my god! And just having a lot of fun. <laughs> this is the, you just add it yeah. as you like. So yeah. as you like, whenever you feel like it. Look, we've got a bag of treasures down here. All the ends that you have from left over from your um, weaving or knitting, mm -hmm. all those little pieces you can use. You don't need to waste anything. And you just feed them in and use your oh. fingers again. In there if you like. And then the warp threads hold them in place. Okay. It's a nice quick fun technique to do. Uh, right. So how you want to make this space and everything is all up to you. Yeah, uh, you can choose however you like to do it. You can fill it with things or you can use the shuttle. 
the yarn on the shuttle and fill it up that way. Right. And you can change the pegs around. And then a new shape will start to happen. Oh, so it's okay to change. It's at any time, yeah, you can. any oh. time you like. There, there are no rules. So oh, you can do how, it as how, you like. How flexible! Mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, very interesting. Any particular name for this weaving? Uh, it's just weaving with no reed. Okay. So no reed weaving. <laughs> oh, amazing! Never seen this before. Interesting. It's quite good for sort of sculptural hanging. Ah. It's a bit more delicate. It might be more fun because you do with your fingers. Yeah. You can yeah. feel the thread each time. That's it. It's a yeah. very nice sensation, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so. You're really in touch with every yeah. thread that you're putting through. Uh, how creative. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. No worries. Okay. So, can I have your name, please? Yes, hello, my name's Amanda. So, you are from, and I'm from Winchester area. So I have a Sowie studio um, called Beautiful Cloth Sowie Studio in Winchester, Hampshire. Oh, long way yes. today. It's quite a long drive. Ah. But, uh, yeah, it's fantastic to be with my Sowie sisters. Ah. <laughs> so, please show me what you're working on today. Yeah, so what I'm working on today <clears throat> is I'm using what we call a comb reed. So if I just move it forward like that, you can see normally the reed will have a cap on it. So there's one there, you can see ah. um, it's got a top on it. Um, oh, this one and normally you're restricted. Once you've threaded up oh. the loom, you're restricted in how the warps are yeah, arranged. Yeah. Uh -huh. But with the, the um, comb reed, you can actually move the warps ah. around while you're in process of weaving ah. to get these kind of open effects. Ah. So if I just show you um, with this. So I'm still beating like that. So I can weave the, the, the normal way. And then I might decide that I'm going to change some of these so I can actually move the warps to make different gaps. Ah. So you just have to be a bit careful so that you move into the same gap. Take the pressure off. So it just makes the gap slightly ah. shorter. So it takes a few passes to get a new space in. You don't have to... It a bit then. So you can arrange it as well with your fingers. It's, it's just a different way of mm. getting a different sort of texture in it. And you can use your fingers. Mm. So it opens it up and get a very nice lacy So you lacy don't have effect. to make this... The Thread the tight. No, it can be loose it's a very, it's a way of getting a very loosely open ah. weave. But you've got the warps where they're gathered. Wow. You've got some kind of a bit of a texture going ah. that way as well as across. What? It's just very free. I mean, you don't yeah. have to use the beater at all. Oh, this looks very it's difficult. Very free. <laughs> it's great because it's so easy. Ah. But it looks interesting and, and, and complicated <laughs> which you know people are impressed by also oh, this is also no no beat one so you can beat or oh you can do either i'm way. using my fingers oh, or you can, use a you can do anything it really is um very very you know you can just play it's just about oh. playing and being experimental so this looks slightly different so will you explain to me yes this is the um standard uh salary loom but we've got the addition of this flat plate at the bottom to allow wheelchair access. Mm. So if people can't use their legs, then we detach the treadles mm. and we fix the loom up so that we can use it without using your feet. So we've got this shelf, so if somebody finds it difficult to hold the shuttle like this, then they can rest the shuttle in the shelf. And we can push the shuttle through so it goes right the way through 
and then you can ah, beat. So and then from it has a huge yeah, candle, so, you so can, it'll be easy. It's an extra, you can hold here, but yeah. we've got a, a handle if somebody ah. um, finds it difficult to reach. I have a lady mm. with a bad back, so she just uses the handle, mm. she doesn't use the rest. And then you can change this Ah, not by the by like pedaling. Tuck it underneath. Ah. Push this back through. Mm. And then beat. Ah. And I, when you beat, I actually like this. Yeah. I would like it. <laughs> it's nice. And because this one is weighted, you notice that it changed the threads over automatically because there's a weight on the back of that one. Ah. So this pushes across. And then we tuck this underneath. Ah, so you don't need to push this back. Oh. And then to change these threads over now, as I pull this back, this comes uh, out from there. Oh. So it swaps over because there's a weight on the back one here. Uh, maybe. And if somebody can't reach to um, forwards to be able to do that by hand, something I haven't got set up, but if we had a, a string from here over the top of this roller here, down to here, I could just pull oh, the string pull oh. So if you like, if there's a string there, you can pull. Oh. Or if somebody can't use their hands, you can do it with your feet. Because oh. you can put your foot in the string, pull the string, mm. which will pull that up, mm. Tuck, and that tucks that under there, oh, and then you can do that. With, you can nice. do it with your feet if you're sat on a chair up here. Oh. So Rose, there's a mannequin here. So what's this for? Will you show me? When we've finished the cloth and it's been washed and pressed, mm. then you can choose what to make. And we do have patterns that mm. you can follow. But one of the things is that something that just starts off as a piece of cloth as soon as you present it to the mannequin and start to drape it around, you're immediately turning your fabric into clothes. Oh. And in the Saori, one of the important things we're trying to allow people is to be creative, self-expressive. You've chosen your materials, you've done your weaving in the way you want to do, you finish it off you choose what to make your clothes in the fabric into mm -hmm. and it'll be style that will suit you so that when you wear something you're saying to everybody this is me mm. <laughs> it's more self-fulfilling yeah it is not, yes. not just the weaving part of it you can yes. actually use it yeah? you can indeed and the cloth is just narrow strips so we are using the Japanese techniques as you with kimono, oh. no cutting or uh -huh. very little cutting uh -huh. or styling. You can just use the cloth mm. and then you do it by, by shaping and by moving it around. So you oh. choose the bit of the cloth that you oh. like and you want to be in a, in a certain place. Mm. And you can work out and then if it's not long enough, you just sew another piece on oh. at the bottom. So you can create your um, clothes. Oh from the simplicity of mm. just these simple lengths of cloth mm. and all the um we do have books I where like this gloss anyway. it's gorgeous oh, nice isn't it? it's full and this is strips I know. of we um no there's strips of fabric that are fabric. cut with a cutter it's sakiori have you heard of sakiori is um a oh, Japanese no. technique of cutting S sake, fabric yeah. into strips. Oh, okay, okay. So many old kimono, yeah. there'll be... Sasaku means to, to rip. Yeah. So, the, oh, okay. so sake, this okay. is fabric cut into strips, as is this purple here. This oh. was um, cotton sheeting cut into strips oh. and woven. And it's a very um, typical oh, nice. um, technique in Japan for oh. making fabric. And then we do have books with... Um, patterns to use as guidelines for people to mm. make up clothing and you can see that you're just using the mm. strips and you just fold them mm. and sew seams so this one is the one I'm wearing ah. it's called the placemat vest ah. and it is easy peasy there's ah. your piece of weaving and you cut it into two and just sew the seams there 
and then you can just do four little seams like that and you've made a top. I see, so, so there even there's a book to provide you the pattern. Yes, so we, we start people off with patterns to give them the confidence, but what we like is that because your cloth may be a different width, different weight, it'll be whatever materials you've used, until you've finished it you don't know what it's going to be suitable for, so if mm. you've woven cloth that's quite heavy and dense you might make a good jacket, mm. if you've woven a cloth that's light then you could make a lightweight top or a mm. scarf or um, a vest so what, of some what's, uh, sort. So what's the idea for this one? Well, I, I thought I might make some more um, light tops with it or, or a little dress. I have had an idea of using the um, the fringed war pens ah. and then just taking the tops and just fixing ah. them together. So there's the top and then I might make another piece here to ah. make a little tunic dress. Ah. So I'm thinking that's what I'll do do with this one. Ah. I haven't quite finished my that ideas yet but so you know then I, I get to I might think oh well I like that I'll try it like that. And then I might, and then I can look and I can see if that's a piece I like, or I might decide that actually I want a piece with the ah, Sakiorian, so ah. I can think perhaps I'm going to put, uh, do I prefer that? Ah, mm, maybe I prefer that. And then I work out how to do the, um, uh, how to put it together to make it into a garment. Uh. magnetic button so you can move it around in different places and it's all rectangles for a feeling like you're wrapped up in a blanket. This jacket has been made using a remi warp which is a nettle fibre with a variety of different yarns in the weft. The pattern that I've used for it comes from this book, which is the rocket vest pattern, and I've adapted it to make a cardigan. This is an asymmetric tunic made with cotton a very varied cloth, it's all very uneven, it can be worn inside out, upside down, it can be pinned, arranged in different ways. This is a knitted coat, woolen knitted coat with a woven collar which has got hand spun grapes on it so I can weave it in, I can weave anything in. This is a, a Mobius scarf, which is the, the weft has been woven, sorry, the warp has been woven into the weft to make this crossover effect. It's just cotton. And this garment has just been made to upcycle a garment that was already in place, but with the sowery being added to create a colourful collar, just on the inside. This is a, a, adapted from a pattern from one of the sowery pattern books, but I didn't quite have enough cloth. So I added in some triangles to give it a bit of shape and spin. Um, so this little top is made of cotton. It's got this interesting feature here, which is a sort of crossover thread. 
Um, just a regular. Thank you so much for a wonderful fashion show. That was so entertaining. And I, <laughs> each of the clothes has been so uh, beautiful and uh, creative. I was very impressed. So, are oh, you wearing this different one? And then, so, oh, this one. I really like this uh, handmade uh, grape bag. Yeah. It's so <laughs> unique. And this one is? So this is linen. It's a linen walk. Oh, linen. linen. So it's a different yes. uh, texture. So a very, very different texture. Ah, and this one? This one's just plain cotton because ah. I wanted something that was easy to put in the machine ah, to wash. Ah, perfect <laughs> yeah. for summer. Yeah? Yes. Wow, That's beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>